Hey y'all! In this video, I'm going to document the installation of an 8 foot by 4 foot lean to shed on the west side of my main shop shed. The lean to was built by a company that is local to me, known as the Shed Guys, and they did a great job. The purpose of this lean to shed is to house my dust collector and my compressor. It didn't have to be huge. As you can see, I don't have a lot of room to place this shed. It just needed to be big enough to house the dust collector and my air compressor. Now I know I could have built this shed myself. But the older I get, the easier it is to farm out jobs like this. There's no way I could have built this shed in the two hours that they built it. And I wanted a warranty. And simply put, I didn't have to do it. I was more than happy to go ahead and farm out this work and let somebody else do the labor. Now as you can see on the west side of the lean-to, there is a set of double doors. Those double doors will allow me access to get to either the compressor or the dust collector or both. I did get a few different options with this shed. You can see they're starting to roof it now. I opted for the 30 year shingle. That's just simply because I don't want to have to crawl around up here on top of this structure in 10 years to replace shingles when the roof starts leaking. I had asked them to place it as firmly against the side of the shop shed as I could as that would make it a lot easier to plumb in the dust collector lines, run electrical to the dust collector and the compressor. 
A couple of days later, I set about disassembling the temporary dust collection system inside the shop shed in an attempt to clear out as much of that corner as I possibly could. I went with a combination of galvanized ducting and a flexible vinyl hose to make a lot of the joints in this dust collection system. There are links to most of the tools and supplies that I used down in the description box of this video. I sealed all of the pipe with aluminum sealing tape and then drilled pilot holes and fastened down the duct work with sheet metal screws. The orange cable that you see me attaching to the wall here is the power to the dust collector. It will run from the control box to the dust collector motor. Then of course I had to climb up on my CNC table and take down the old temporary dust collection system. Mounting the new duct work was pretty simple. I didn't go for anything fancy. I just used some pieces of an old mason's line to suspend the duct work from the ceiling as I want this particular pipe to move back and forth with the gantry of the CNC router. That's also why I used a short piece of vinyl hose to allow that joint to flex, move back and forth freely without bending pipe or putting any of the joints in a bind. After getting the system mocked up, I attached everything to the CNC router and ran it to its extents just to make sure that all of the connections were secure and that all of the hoses were long enough to allow the CNC to use its full range of motion. Okay, while I have the doors off for painting, let me give you a little whirlwind tour of what I have going on here. As you can see, I have the dust collector mounted on this wall of the lean-to and the input into the dust deputy comes through the wall right here. This orange cord is the power cable that goes to the dust collector motor. The other end of this cord comes out the wall inside the shop shed and that plugs into the controller box on the Avid CNC. This is the output power from the controller box into the dust collector. There is another separate power cord that's the input power from the wall into the controller box. When I turn on the relay, the dust collector motor comes on. I'm running a dust deputy cyclone into a 14 gallon drum. And this is where the dust collector is going to live from now on. The output then runs into, for right now, the stock Harbor Freight uh, filter bag and plastic bag down below. I have not plumbed in uh, the compressor yet. It still sits here. It's going to go back in this corner. It will be plumbed in with uh, PEX pneumatic line and I'll have uh, inlets inside the shop. That's gonna be saved for another video. I'm not ready to do that just yet. I also don't have power run out here for the compressor just yet. That's gonna be next on the list. I've spent all my time getting the dust collector plumbed in and wired in so that I could finish a couple of projects. Now that those projects are done, I can get out here and I can plumb in the compressor. But again, that's for a later video. With everything mocked up, I 
went ahead and attached the main power cable for the dust collector. Now this just simply plugs into the wall outlet next to the uh, galvanized ductwork. Then I placed this power cord into a cord protector just to keep me from tripping over it and to protect the cord from any kind of damage should something roll over the top of it. This cord goes into the control box on the CNC, then the orange cord comes out of the control box on the CNC. With everything mocked up and after adding a couple of rigid uh, ductwork supports, I fastened all of the pipe together, sealed it up with aluminum tape, and it was ready to go. Then it was on to my least favorite part of the entire process, and that was caulking and painting the shed. I say my least favorite part because, simply put, I'm not very good at it, especially when it comes to two-tone paint jobs. I tend to get pretty messy. The shed isn't big enough for me to break out the airless paint sprayer, so I just went ahead and handled it with brushes and rollers. And yes, it was painted to match the main shop shed. Everything got three coats of paint, by the way. But after getting it all painted up and weather tight, I think it turned out looking pretty good. Then it was time to reinstall the doors, and I have to tell you, this is a fun job to do by yourself, and not one I would like to do more than a couple of times. But it all turned out well in the end. Got everything adjusted right and the doors work perfectly. All in all, the finished shed turned out looking nice and I'm very happy with it. So my lean-to build and installation is, for all intents and purposes, finished. Overall, uh, this has been quite a process. It's taken me quite a while to get done, but that's what happens when you get older. I'm so glad to have this finished. It has freed up a lot of space back here in this corner of my rather small shop. I was able to get my toolbox moved back up against the wall where I wanted it. I was able to move my vacuum system up over here by the table saw. And I was finally able to get my Fulton Panel Max clamping system mounted to the wall and start using it. Now, there were a lot of tools and supplies used to get this project done. Far too many to list down in the description of this video. So what I'll do is I'll just post links to some of the more oddball tools and supplies that I used. The kind of things you can't find at your regular big box store. I'll list those down in the description of this video. Now I know there's no way I covered everything that I could possibly cover on a build like this. So this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where you can ask me any question you'd like about the lean-to installation, the dust collector system, how it works with the Mach 4 software, or anything else about the Lean 2 build, or anything else in my previous videos. That's this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session 
down in the description box of this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a lot of fun, so I hope you'll join me. Now, before we wrap this up, I'd like to say a special thank you to my channel members. And remember, channel members, check the community tab here on my YouTube channel for the link to this Monday's members-only live stream. If you would like information about becoming a channel member, just click that little join button down there by the subscribe button. A panel will pop up and a video will play that'll tell you all about channel membership. So, I hope to see everybody this afternoon for the live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, whether you become a channel member or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. Y'all take care.